Hey everyone, today I've got some really cool advancements that are happening in AI video. First off, an entirely new way of controlling motion in your AI videos. Uh, check this out. Yeah, that's pretty interesting, right? Plus, I've got the first video generator that can be trained on your voice and an update to a free creative image upscaler, plus a preview of one of my favorite face swappers. Lots to cover, let's dive in. First up, we have Boximator, which is a new approach for generating fine-grained motion control, and it comes to us from TikTok, but there are no dancing girls in any of the examples, so thank you very much for that, TikTok. So we're gonna run through the whole thing in just a minute, but just to kind of give you a high level view of what Boximator does is you can take a static image, uh, draw boxes in areas and then prompt to have motion. Uh, just the simple act of, you know, the coffee cup to drinking. I mean, I know that many of you have run into challenges accomplishing this on anything from, you know, Gen 2 to Pika. And to be clear, nothing against Gen 2 or Pika. I love both of those platforms, but you have to admit getting very specific movements can sometimes be a bit of a challenge. So I just took a screenshot of our boy drinking coffee, brought it over to Gen 2 and, you know, using the motion brush tools, which are again, really, really great, painting out his arm and giving it a vertical up along with the prompt man lifting arm and drinking from coffee mug and giving it a general. And we get this, which is actually kind of awesome, where his right arm is like hulking out as he's lifting the cup. And listen, this is the anti cherry pick. This was just the first generation that I rolled. Again, this is nothing against Gen 2. I think that anyone who has spent time generating video on either platform knows that, you know, it takes a lot of rerolls to dial something in. So stating the obvious to anyone who has played around with AI video, uh, the generators do have a problem understanding and complying to our text prompts. More so, and I do think that we've all run into this, they tend to get very confused when you have multiple objects in the image, such as the dog here and the ball here, and you're trying to get them to do two separate things. Boximator solves this issue with, well, boxes. The way it works is that you begin by drawing an object selection box around the thing you want to move, and then another box which represents the ending state of where you want the object to end up. Uh, you also have an arrow to create a motion path as well. So we'll take a look at this example here uh, with the balloons. And, and yeah, there you go. That's pretty awesome. So what's interesting is that when you draw a box, Boximator is actually creating a soft box around that. And that's basically an area that's telling the model, you only really have to pay attention to this area. You can ignore what's outside of there. And because we've set an end box as well, uh, the soft box can then travel along with your subject. So you generally will end up with more temporal coherency. The level of motion control is really impressive. Here's uh, like this anime still image. Uh, the prompt here is girl playing a piano. And obviously they are putting in their bounding boxes, their arrows, and specifically saying, go to that corner and that's something that i don't necessarily think you could prompt any of the current video models to do like go to the high end of the keyboard it very much does seem to understand directionality as well uh, this was an image of spider-man i believe the prompt here is spider-man swinging through the city uh, it begins with a bounding box obviously around spider-man an ending box here and then the end result looks like this um it's really yeah that's pretty awesome. There's directional camera controls in this as well, uh, as we'll see here. Once that green uh, bounding box comes along, you'll see the final output in the final few frames, we have a slight pan up. Here's an example that I think really showcases the potential of Boximator. Uh, on the left, we have Boximator. In the center is Pika, and on the right is Gen 2. This is probably most definitely an image to video situation. Clearly, Pika and Gen 2 struggle with this text prompt because the rose is not in the initial image. But again, because Boximator is only paying attention to what was presumably a box drawn around his uh, right arm, it, it has the resources to be able to literally pull a rose out of a hat or a pocket at least who keeps a rose in their pocket anyways and how's it coming out looking that nice i call shenanigans on this whole thing so you're probably thinking great where can i try this well unfortunately it does not look like it's going to be available for the next two to three months however they did open up a channel in which you can send them an image along with a text prompt and they'll actually generate it for you and send it back to you so i actually sent a couple in uh, i'll let you know what i see the link to boximator is down below along with the email 
email address obviously you can send your images over to to try it out next up we're circling back to nvidia who were kind enough to sponsor today's video so you might remember that we took a look at nvidia a few weeks ago via their gpt uh, well they're back with a new feature and this is one that i have not seen anywhere else namely that you can now train your own voice to narrate ai generated videos Cloning your voice is very simple. You just hit this, you know, clone your voice thing. Uh, I actually already added mine in there, but if I wanted to do a new one, uh, you would just hit this add your voice and then submit a recording of at least 30 seconds. The model does train very quickly. In fact, I think it was faster than me trying to record 30 seconds of audio that I wasn't, you know, flubbing and stubbling all over myself. Uh, so let's give it a shot. Over the weekend, there was the news story that Sam Altman was raising $7 trillion for semiconductors. I mean, 7 trillion just being a baffling number to me. Uh, so I gave it the prompt, let's, you know, go ahead and make a news story about that. And we'll make the video about one minute long. And I said, please use my voice. So let's give that a shot and see what comes out. Now, what's really interesting is that NVIDIA will actually go out and look for news stories related to your topic as well. After a few minutes, we have a video, let's check it out. Sam Altman, the visionary CEO of OpenAI, is on a mission to solve the global chip shortage. He's aiming to raise a jaw-dropping $7 trillion. Yes, you heard it right. $7 trillion, Altman's grand plan to supercharge chip production, creating a partnership between OpenAI, chip makers, and a host of potential investors. So I'll admit that took me a minute to wrap my head around because when I first heard it, I was like, well, it sounds like me, but it kind of sounds a little bit off. What is that? And then I realized that offness was professionalism. That said, some of the shot selection in here, I wasn't a huge fan of. I don't know if I really went over this last time, but you can come up and hit this edit button. I have this footage of Sam that I nicked from the World Economic Forum, uh, and I can just replace this shot with this. Additionally, a nice kind of quality of life thing is that it actually highlights where in the script uh, the various visuals are. So uh, this jaw-dropping $7 trillion, uh, I wanted to swap this shot out. An interesting thing ran across this. This is what $1 trillion looks like. I guess dollar bills stacked upon one another. Uh, yeah, so that seven of them, Sam wants seven of them. So although this may not be accurate to script, um, we'll just pop that in there and then apply the changes and see how that comes out. And I will say there was a bit of a weird read. It's like the lines were kind of stepping on one another, but you can actually solve that by once again, coming into the edit uh, and going into edit script. From there, I just changed the line to what is Altman's grand plan and applied the changes. Yes, you heard it right. Seven trillion. What is Altman's grand plan? To super As we went over last time, InVideo is free to use. You can generate up to four videos completely for free, train your own voice for free as well. But if you want to generate videos without watermarks, you will of course need to sign up for the plus plan at the very least, which actually is fairly affordable at $25 a month, considering that it is pulling from a number of different stock video sites. So uh, yeah, it's actually fairly reasonable in all honesty. If you're interested in trying out NVIDIA, the link is down below. And once again, I do thank them for sponsoring this video. Moving on, Korea have updated their Creative AI Upscaler, and you can try it out for free. So this was a Midjourney V6 image that I rolled up. As we saw last time, when you upload an image, Crea will auto-populate the prompt for you. You can, of course, edit and change that. Uh, it will upscale from 2X to 16X, only 2X if you're on the free plan. You obviously have to be on a paid plan for 4X and above. There's, of course, styles, uh, all the sort of standards, uh, photorealistic, digital, product, and portrait, and then the AI strength slider. A complaint that I do hear quite often is that it changed my image. And yes, that's actually what these creative upscalers are doing. It's almost like an AI generation above an AI generation. If you don't want that to happen, you can just simply take the AI slider down and it hypothetically should just upscale your image without making any changes. That said, I did have this one cranked fairly high. So uh, as it upscaled, it kind of definitely turned it into sort of more of an HDR image, but it also changed these guys into, if you'll notice the, the tree there became serpents, uh, which is kind of, it's kind of cool actually. Now, currently, if you're just breezing into Korea on the free plan, uh, you're probably going to get one or two upscales out of them before you run out of GPU credits for the day. So just sort of budget your upscaling to that. Now, that said, Leonardo will soon be releasing their creative upscaler called Universal Upscaler. Uh, I just happen to have an early alpha look at it. Uh, this, again, works pretty much similarly to the rest of them. Um, you know, you input your image here. You have a number, again, of different styles that you can 
and choose your creativity slider and your upscale multiplier. Currently, this is only upscaling to 2x. Uh, the end result looks really, really quite good. Uh, and Leonardo actually did not end up uh, getting confused over here and creating like Gila monsters out of the tree. Uh, but yeah, really, really solid. This one was a kind of a mid-journey fail uh, when style references first came out, but I actually ended up kind of liking it. So bringing it into the Leonardo upscaler um, and then kind of cranking the creativity gets us this, which again, it looks really, really pretty great. Universal upscaler should be releasing pretty soon. I will definitely let you guys know when it is live. Rounding out, I ran across a preview of the new version of one of my favorite face swappers, Face Fusion. This is Face Fusion 2.30. And yeah, it is definitely looking really good. The dots that we're seeing there are the face point tracking system that obviously won't be there on final release. No release date yet for Phase Fusion 2.30, but yeah, I just ran across it and wanted to share it with you all. So that's it for today. Although I will say that there's probably a ton of creative AI stuff coming down the pike. So I will probably see you very, very soon. I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.